Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to TBR's webinar, Inside Converged Infrastructure, Viewing the Landscape of Vendors, Customers, and Opportunity, which is a high-level review of the results from our recent Converged Infrastructure Study. I'm Allison Crawford, and I will be your host for today's session. In the next 45 minutes, Senior Analyst Christian Perry will delve into some of the results found in this groundbreaking study, positioning these results to show how they will influence the market in the coming quarters, followed by Q&A of these trends and how they will affect you. Before Christian gets started, I'd like to cover some housekeeping items. First, we'll be recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI Channel. We encourage you to visit our channel to watch this presentation or any of the others we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. Christian will address them at the end of the presentation. Or if you'd like to set up a client inquiry for more detailed discussion, please reach out directly to Christian at the end of the presentation to set up that conversation. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find the slides as well as other thought leadership pieces, webinar decks, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash tbr underscore market underscore insight. Now let me introduce Christian Perry, Senior Analyst on the computing team here at TBR. Christian is the lead on our data center research and has covered the market for more than 20 years for baseline, processor, smart computing, and PC today. He is leading our research in converged infrastructure, which is helping our clients position themselves in this dynamic market. And with that, let me hand this over to Christian. Thanks, Allison. So what I'd like to do today is provide an overview of, of, as Allison discussed, our recent converged infrastructure research, where we went into the U.S. market and talked to uh, over 400 current adopters of converged systems. So our definition of converged infrastructure or a converged system is compute, storage, and networking in a single stack uh, along with that, that software infrastructure uh, management layer on top to pull it all together. So we looked at the market from certain, several angles, uh, including vendor opportunity, uh, workloads, system attributes, and uh, vet the various vendor strategies that are helping to shape the market and uh, drive continued penetration of converged infrastructure. So if there's one thing that's, that's really consistent about the converged infrastructure market, it's, it's really that there's plenty of inconsistency. Some customers are buying general purpose systems uh, for a range of workloads, while others are buying those same types of systems to deploy just a single workload. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, we're seeing customers seek out those, those really highly engineered systems or stacks that are designed for a particular workload or use case. And even when they, uh, they adopt those systems, we're seeing more than one workload being uh, placed on those systems as well. So there's a lot of variety out there in the market, uh, which, which essentially equates to a lot of opportunity on the vendor side. And vendors, for that matter, are taking uh, plenty of different approaches as well to converge infrastructure. For example, uh, we see the Dells and the VCEs coming to market with uh, portfolios full of more general purpose systems, or at least systems that are marketed as, as being able to handle a range of workloads. Uh, and on the other side, we see Oracle and, to a certain extent, HP and IBM uh, with systems that are designed for uh, specific use cases. We do feel that moving forward, the blended approach will be the best bet to uh, continued success in the converged market where a portfolio will hold systems that can handle a range of workloads as well as those that can uh, target very specific use cases such as private cloud or uh, online transaction processing or VDI or even uh, big data analytics. Bottom line, there's plenty of opportunity in the market uh, and, and we, we do uh, project the, the total addressable market in the U.S. to be uh, about $4 billion over the next 12 months. Uh, this is among mid-size and large U.S. enterprises. We do feel that that opportunity will continue to grow and expand beyond that number as more customers become accustomed to converged systems. We did find when we went out into the market that customers aren't uh, stopping after they adopt a converged system or a set of converged systems or even systems uh, from, from multiple vendors. 
they have plans to buy more. Uh, so they're satisfied with the uh, infrastructure, with the technology, and they do plan on continuing to at least consider it for future purpose, uh, uh, future purchases. So as I mentioned, we did find that customers are using systems for a wide range of workload requirements, and we do uh, attribute this to a number of different factors. First off, the systems are capable, and they're not foreign to customers. And by foreign, I mean they're not strange. They're not, uh, you know, the, the customers aren't unfamiliar with the technologies. These are technologies they've been using for years. Now they're presented and, and designed and engineered in a different way, and in a way that presents far more efficiency and cost savings and transparencies. So customers really aren't afraid to use converged systems. They're not afraid to consider uh, converged systems. And the marketing on the vendor side is, is tremendously effective in, in helping customers understand how these systems uh, differ from their existing traditional architecture and how the systems can help them uh, with their business pains. Uh, and, and customers aren't necessarily happy with the infrastructure that they're currently using. Uh, there's a lot of complexity. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of difficulty using, using technology to handle a new workload requirement when the technology is, uh, is, is, is expanded you know, greatly throughout a data center, you know, uh, with a scale-out approach. So trying to rein in all of that complexity to handle something new, such as uh, big data analytics, uh, can be a little difficult in terms of management. Uh, so customers do say that Converge infrastructure and Converge systems help them to uh, manage these new requirements. Uh, Customers, we found, also don't necessarily deploy only the workload that influenced the purchase. And I'll talk about that a little bit more on the coming slides. This is an interesting finding. We did feel that uh, this is what we were going to find when we went into the market, um, and this is what is happening. And, I, and again, I'll touch on that a bit more on the coming slides. Uh, and looking down the road, customers are really considering all workloads in their environment as potential deployment options on Converge infrastructure. Uh, customers are still feeling their way around Converge infrastructure to see where the opportunities are for them to help solve those business pains. Uh, so that's good news uh, for vendors in the space because there's plenty of opportunity moving forward to help customers pull those workloads off of uh, existing infrastructure and onto Converge systems and potentially onto systems that uh, are provided by vendors outside of their primary uh, service or primary uh, server vendor. So we looked at workloads from two different angles. We looked at workloads uh, that influenced the purchase of converged systems and those that were actually deployed after purchase. We felt uh, prior to going out into the field, based on some conversations we had with customers, that customers don't necessarily place the same workload or the same set of workloads on the systems uh, that, that, that prompted them to purchase the systems. So, for example, we found that uh, private cloud or those workloads used to build private cloud and online transaction processing were some of the top influencers for converged system purchases. But then when we looked at the workloads that were actually deployed after purchase, uh, private cloud and OLTP were still strong. But what really rose to the top were those data-centric workloads, such as database, data warehousing, uh, big data analytics. So that's not to say that customers aren't placing workloads on their systems that, uh, that, that they needed to, to put on those systems, and that's why they purchased the systems, but they're also considering other workloads and actually deploying them. Uh, we do also attribute uh, some of this to private cloud in particular. Even though customers might have plans for private cloud and they'll purchase uh, infrastructure to accommodate uh, those needs for, for private clouds, the, the actual deployment of private cloud certainly is a, is a bit more complex than perhaps they anticipated for many, for many customers and in many environments. So that actual deployment can take a bit longer in some cases. Uh, we find this as well for VDI. 
customers definitely have VDI on their on their uh, radar, but the actual deployment can take a little longer. Now, with converged systems, uh, certainly it eases the transition or eases the process of actually uh, deploying private cloud and VDI, and, and we do feel that customers will uh, gravitate towards that ease moving forward and, uh, and deploy more converged systems uh, to, to uh, help them with that process. Uh, so, we, so bottom line, uh, vendors really need to understand their customer requirements prior to purchase uh, because the, even though customers may be interested in a converged system or a set of systems to handle, say, one particular workload, there may be other workloads there that are on the radar and may be able to, uh, may be, able to uh, be deployed on other systems or even that system. Uh, and, and once customers are uh, are using those systems, there's certainly more opportunities uh, around the services side, uh, on the software side, to help uh, further develop uh, those workloads in those customer environments and keep customers happy. Um, so I'll talk about hardware quality a little bit later and how this is basically a common denominator for vendors who are playing in the converged market. But now on the workload side, we're seeing that data workloads such as, as data warehousing and database and so on, uh, ERP, are going to be at the top of the wish list for customers look, looking at converged systems. Not all customers, but uh, quite a few of them and perhaps a majority of them. So really, that needs to be a part of the portfolios for vendors in the market if they want a big piece of the, of the market pie. Uh, and again, this 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 market is just going to continue to grow. So, uh, focusing on on those data fo on those data centric workloads will be key moving ahead. So, quality and reliability. So, we we looked at uh, a, a wide range of system attributes when we went into the market and talked to customers. And we do this in our customer satisfaction research as well. So looking at things like quality, reliability, uh, ongoing quality, um, improved reliability. So that's reliability that's improved over whatever they're using, whatever infrastructure or architectures they're using at the moment. Uh, things like support, uh, system features, open architectures, CapEx, OpEx savings. We found that quality and reliability is the most critical factor to customers who are considering converged infrastructure purchases. Uh, this isn't much different from what we found or what we always find on the traditional x86 server side when we ask customers what's important to their purchases. Quality and reliability, definitely key. So this isn't a big surprise, and it's not a big surprise considering how uh, expensive some of these systems are, or, or most of them, compared to traditional x86 servers. Uh, the customers want to know, certainly, that their systems are going to be ready and available uh, when they need them, and of course that's uh, all of the time. Uh, so moving forward, uh, customers or systems must be of high quality and reliability. Uh, but those are those factors are what we consider to be the bottom line requirements for uh, participating in the converged market. Those are the table stakes. If you don't have systems that uh, show high levels of quality and reliability, uh, you're going to have issues uh, competing in the market. Uh, but if those table stakes are down, if you have them, uh, if your systems are, you know, if, if if customers are happy with the quality, then it's it's uh, we advise focusing on things like support, product design and features, and simplified deployment. Uh, these are the things that can help vendors differentiate and uh, and uh, gain an advantage over uh, over other vendors in the market. Uh, overall, we did find the customers are. Uh, very satisfied with their systems, uh, and these are systems across uh, all vendors that we looked at, and we we looked at a lot of vendors. We looked at every potential converged system out there in the market, uh, and the good news is customers are indeed happy. Um, so 
we, I talked about those table stakes, uh, and, and regardless of the workloads that customers are using, those table stakes need to be there. But customers are, are really going to expect those table stakes. They're going to expect high levels of quality and reliability. Uh, so once you move to things like simplified deployment um, or better support, then you get into the differentiation. Um, Note also the vendors with full solutions. That is, vendors providing the compute, storage, and networking, and the software, and the support, all within uh, under one umbrella, might have an advantage moving forward over vendors that partner for certain pieces of the converged stack, uh, at least in terms of support. Uh, part of the beauty of converged systems, of course, is that customers have, uh, so to speak, one throat to choke. That might not always be the case with partner-led systems moving forward, especially if uh, potential issues arise with partnerships uh, that, that help to form a converged system or a converged portfolio. So I did talk about hardware quality and reliability, but let's take a closer look now. Uh, we found that the larger the enterprise, the more important those factors are to the purchase decision. So if we look to the left of this graph uh, with SMBs, we found that 61.5% of, of customers with uh, up to 1,000 employees feel that quality and reliability of the hardware is critically important. Now, if you move up to uh, uh, those customers with up to 5,000 employees, that bumps up to 78.4%. We do find that customers, larger customers, are making larger purchases. So there's going to be a, a stronger eye, a stronger focus on quality and reliability. We did find that IT decision makers and LOB executives both value these attributes, but the IT decision makers consider it a bit more critical than LOB execs. In general, uh, we did find slight differences between IT decision makers and LOB executives when we examined uh, various factors in our research, such as workloads and buying plans. And moving forward, vendors, we think, will find it critical to engage uh, with both sides of the house, uh, both sides of the enterprise, and find the right match for hardware and software because, uh, so when we went into the market, we didn't want to look at just IT decision makers. We wanted to look at those LOB executives because we do find that LOB executives are becoming much, uh, much more involved in the purchase decision, especially with converged infrastructure, and we attribute that to uh, the real uh, heavily defined uh, uh, interests around workloads uh, with enterprises when it comes to converged infrastructure. And so those LOB execs, uh, in many cases, know or understand their uh, workload requirements. So they have to be part of the picture when going out into the market and uh, both with marketing and sales efforts. So we talked about a little bit about opportunity and we talked about the total addressable market. Budgets are very strong for uh, that, that's allocated budgets are strong for converged infrastructure moving forward. We found that the average customer budget, and this is among U.S. midsize and large enterprises, is nearly $900,000 uh, over the next 12 months. And more than a quarter of the respondents in our research uh, anticipate a budget of more than $1 million. Uh, so this is total converged budget, not just for you know a single system. And Keep in mind that this also includes services, uh, which represent a big part of the overall spend on converged infrastructure. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity there on the services side, and that opportunity is really tied to uh, helping customers understand how to uh, what the, not only what the systems can do, not only what the, the systems can do to help them with their business pains and the workload requirements but how to integrate the systems within their environments, how the systems are going to, uh, to play with the rest of their overall ecosystem. And we do see that customers are focusing their, their, their services spend on those types of things. Of course, support is very big, uh, but so is strategy and integration and deployment. 
so that's where we see the, the pendulum swinging in terms of services spend uh, right now. Uh, we do think that, that uh, budgets will continue to be strong because customer sen sentiment is high. Satisfaction is strong. Uh, so as customers uh, develop more experience with the systems moving forward, we feel that they're going to be even more willing to purchase converged infrastructure simply because of uh, the reduced complexity and the cost savings. The more of this infrastructure that's in their environments, the more they're going to realize those cost savings. Now, we do uh, attribute some of this, this, these high levels of satisfaction to what we term the, uh, the new car smell. So you get a new car, uh, you, you get into your new car, and there's always that new car smell. Uh, it doesn't always stick around. But once it's there, uh, you have a good feeling about your car. The same thing we see happening with Converge infrastructure. Uh, these systems are very capable, as I said. Uh, customers say that they're very reliable. Uh, so customers are happy. And we, so we think that that's going to help boost budgets uh, moving forward, at least over the next few years. So in general, the customers we spoke with are are, are happy with our converged systems, and that's reflected here. Uh, as you'll see, customers think that their systems are saving them time, uh, certainly because the systems reduce complexity, uh, and, and, the, the, and in turn, it helps customers save costs. Uh, part of that, that reduced complexity is on the, the uh, deployment and integration side, uh, and that also impacts the bottom line as well. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is perfect. You see here on these slides, these are uh, all positive quotes. These are ver verbatim quotes from customers that we spoke with out in the market. But uh, not everything is perfect. And some customers we found indicated that the systems aren't as easily uh, deployed and configured as vendors might indicate or what the vendors promised uh, at the time of purchase or prior to purchase. So that shows to us that there's still room for improvement in terms of helping customers integrate the systems in their environments. But in general, there's a lot of positive energy happening in the converged market. There aren't a lot of complaints that we encountered. Again, really the only major complaints we found were around uh, those the, the deployment and integration and con configuration. Uh, but even in the big picture, uh, those were relatively minor compared to the overall set of feedback that we received around converged systems almost across the board, across the vendor board. So if there were or really three things to take away from today's webinar, it's that, uh, number one, customers really have converged systems on their radar. Customers in the market aren't just purchasing systems from their primary server vendor either. Uh, in many cases, that is indeed happening. Customers, and we, we find this with other technologies as well, customers will consider converged systems first from their primary server vendor, since, of course, uh, the servers are a piece of that converged stack. Uh, not necessarily the same servers, but uh, the same type of technology and approach. Uh, but customers are also uh, considering other vendors to fulfill those specific workload requirements that perhaps their primary server vendor isn't targeting with its, its converged systems. Um, and I did mention satisfaction is strong, so the opportunity in turn continues to be strong for vendors. Uh, number two, customers appear to be willing to use systems for purposes outside of, for which, outside of those for which they, they purchase the systems. So, as I mentioned, this might be due to customer requirements changing between the time they purchase the system and the time they actually deployed them, but we think it's more because the systems are just plain capable of handling a wide range of workloads. And, and certainly the better software management on these systems is helping to ease customers' uh, transition over to these systems. That's, that's a, the, the software is a critical, critical piece of the overall uh, uh, converged landscape 
Uh, and it's also a critical piece in terms of vendor differentiation. Uh, this, the hardware in these systems isn't tremendously different from what, what customers have encountered in the market for years, but it's that software layer, it's that software management that's really going to attract customers uh, in terms of helping to manage, manage their environments. Uh, and, and we see this with, with other parts of, of the data center as well. Things are easier to manage. Customers are going to consider new products and those that help them with their, their overall management. Uh, so, and finally, uh, differentiating in, in what's becoming a very crowded converged market depends on factors outside of hardware quality and reliability. Again, those are the attributes that customers are going to expect will be there for the systems. But it's really those things such as better support, more simplified deployment, uh, and, and such that are really going to have it or make a difference for customers when they're considering a converged system purchase. So with that, uh, thank you for joining and I'll turn it back over to Allison to begin the Q&A. Thanks Christian and thanks for those of you who sent through some questions. Christian, the first question we have is, you mentioned that services are a big part of the average spend on converged systems. Can you talk about which services are being purchased? Sure. So I did touch on this a little bit. I can go a little bit deeper here. So we found that uh, so we found that services purchased really are similar to those that are purchased with other uh, relatively new technologies. So in particular, these are things like support, deployment, strategy. We, with the customers that we we talked with really need help. They need help determining not only which systems will best suit their needs but how the systems will fit in their ecosystems, uh, how the systems will play with their other technologies. Here you have a concept that will replace essentially the same technologies existing in today's data centers, but it's all still formulated in a different way, a more efficient way. There's better management, better transparency. So helping customers understand the benefits around those things, uh, uh, we think really presents an opportunity for vendors to change the way customers think uh, about their IT. Great. Um, did you see any difference in workload deployments between IT respondents and line of business executives? Sure. So there, there's not a lot of differentiation. Those, those data-focused workloads, uh, such as data warehousing and database, are strong across both groups. Uh, but there are some differences. So, for example, uh, line-of-business execs have a slightly stronger focus on those sorts of business transformation workloads, such as VDI. But other than that, across the board, again, purchases uh, the, the purchasers both on the IT side and the business uh, side of the house are deploying very similar workloads. Uh, whether it's, um, you know, again, whether it's IT or line of business, it's actually making the purchase. Uh, and, and it's those workloads that are influencing the purchase as well, uh, very similar across IT and line of business. Okay, thanks. Um, the next question we have is, do, do the services purchased differ according to company size? So, uh, for, so for the most part, we found that things like system integration, support, and consulting are important for companies of all sizes when it comes to converged infrastructure. Uh, but things like operations management, so when we looked at companies with 5,000 or more employees, uh, there's a different set of challenges there, and we did find that things such as operation man operations management uh, became more important uh, as you went upstream, up into those larger enterprises. Great. Uh, looks like we don't have any other questions, so I want to thank those of you who sent questions through, and thank you, Christian, uh, Christian for the presentation today. Um, as I mentioned, you can follow both Christian and TBR on Twitter at the handles listed here, and I've also shared the social media links for SlideShare and YouTube, and we encourage you to get involved in the conversations on both of those uh, URLs. Uh, before we sign off, we'd like you to ask you to take a brief survey about today's webinar. Your feedback will help us improve the webcast quarter to quarter, so your feedback is much appreciated. Um, and this survey that Christian uh, presented the findings from today is part of an ongoing research track, so we will have additional findings to see how the market has moved uh, in the next six to seven months. You can expect another report then. Uh, if you'd like to get access to this survey, because obviously Christian only talked about high-level findings, 
You can email him directly at christian.perry at tbri.com to have uh, additional conversations on how to get access to that data. I'm going to leave the chat function open for another few minutes in case anyone has any last minute questions. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you guys all again in another six to seven months. Have a great afternoon, everyone.